Hi, everyone. Well, my name is Hernan Lopez, as, as she said already, but it's kind of, you have to say it always. That I'm Hernan Lopez from Epic Lama Games uh, from Argentina. Uh, I will be taking the, the challenge of making a graphic adventure game, kind of. We made a, a game that is like kind of Monkey Island 3, in my opinion, the best of the games ever. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, yes, the graphic adventures. It's heavy uh, influenced by it, and it's, it got kind of uh, an art direction that resembles it, but it's mixed with uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Well, that's the game we made. Uh, now I will be talking about the challenge of making a game with that kind of, of feel. Well, the first thing, be prepared. It not, it's not easy to make a graphic adventure. It consumes a lot of time. Uh, it, you have to be prepared, you, ha you have to prepare ahead because it's kind of uh, like reading a book. It's the, in, the game, in the game world, is, I think it's the, most, the thing that is most near to a book. But it's worse than a book because you have to like, make a line out of everything that is there. And since we have like three commands, talk, see, and grab, you have like to read a lot of things. You have to do a lot of data entry. You have to get uh, like uh, to take a lot of coordination to make it. With, because the artist, the game developer, and the writer have to be like super, super connected. Well, the first thing, you, the second thing that you need really is having a story to tell. If you don't have a story to tell, you will end it with a hidden object game or with a puzzle game, but nothing more than that. You you need to have a story. Uh, uh, you have to have like a well-defined vision of, of what are you doing. Are you doing comedy? Are you doing drama? Are you doing uh, horror? What what story do you want to tell? You have like definite the the hero arc. Like we got this uh, my character that will have a problem that he has to solve, and he will have a, a solution at the end of the story. But you have to kind of already have defined what, what's going to happen in that story. Like, it's a, it's a guy who is a plumber who wants to rescue a princess, but she's in another castle. Cause I, kind of that uh, kind of thing you have to be got defined. Uh, well, also you have to make uh, the story interesting. You have to do something to hook the player to, to be invested in, that, in those characters, in that story. Because otherwise, why should the player care? Uh, also, you have to think ahead of the mechanics that you will be using to solve this kind of, of problems. He will be able to pick up items. He will not be able to pick up items. He will be able to just pick one item at a time. He will be changing, I don't know, a leg or, or something like that. Uh, he can combine items. He cannot combine items. It's kind of things that you have to be prepared to, to think, and the third point is make a world that is cool to explore. If you have a world that is ordinary, uh, an ordinary world, a world like every day, probably you, you can do it, because you can do it a, a game of everything, but it's much better if you have a kind of world that is fa a fantasy one, something that the people is not related to and who will be like, What's that? What, like we was an underworld and a city haunted and, and something like that. Challenge two and very important resources. Uh, do you have a lot of time? Do you have uh, the time and the money to do that? Because since the ga these games are what at least what the, the one we were doing uh, have a lot of art on it. Probably if you do a, a graphic adventure, we'll have to had a lot of art. Again, since it's like making a book or making a movie, he have to be, he have to look cool. And every puzzle, every place is a new scene, so it, you will need a lot of time to draw everything, a lot of time to rate everything, a lot of time to give to the actors if they are vain boys. Uh, it was our case. The, it will take a lot, a lot of time to to edit, and there will be a lot of data entry. Data entry is terrible because you have to edit uh, every, every part of the game. You have to edit the sound, you have to edit the items, you have to edit the map, you have to 
you have to you will need a lot of time and a lot of resources and then you have to polish everything because always always there is something some puzzle or something that the player will be able to like solve in other way that you don't you don't think like i don't know you have to open a door and or or bypass a guard and you left drawn a knife and the player could think oh, i must stab that guy and i just walk away so uh, you have to give good explanation why that should not work well I, you have the right uh, team to do that because you will need a good artist good animators good writers good programmer the musician could be there could be not but it, because you can be like the third party music I think I already did that. No, no, risk management. You will, if you are pitching your your game to a publisher, uh, keep uh, in, in here the risk management. The the like give give you extra time frame to be able to to end, to finish the game because there is a lot of things that could could happen that will delay you. For for instance. Uh, one of our voice actors have uh, a, a health problem, so he will not. He was not able to, to record for for a longer time, and that could have delayed us. Like if we make the promise to deliver in three months, we will be delayed, but much more than that. Uh, the challenge number three: communication. You have to be a, a really, really uh, near team. You you have to keep the developer. developer Reader and artists like connected all the time, because as I, as I told before, if the artists could take a, like a liberty and put in a palm tree, in a palm tree, a coconut, for example, and it wasn't supposed to be there that coconut, and the player could think that he can solve the problem with that coconut, uh, you will have a, a player that will be like hungry with you because there is that coconut that he could grab but since it's not coded it's not written he cannot grab it you will click it and nothing is going to happen so you have to approve the sketch early and look for continuity like I said, I said like I just told about the, the coconut thing keep localization in, ta in mind uh, from the very start that's something that we learn and it's kind of super harsh because there is a lot of code that you will have to do to make a localization work for these kind of games that are like super texted basset. Uh, so keep in mind that. They start with, with localization in mind when you are programming or where the programmer guy is like uh, doing that. Now about the puzzles, uh, you have like a three dimension of puzzles that will make uh, complexity, the, the learning curve like that you can like tweak to make it work. Like, first clever usage of item. Don't think of uh, straightforward. For example, uh, the character have to enter to a club, and the only way to enter to the club is to present to the, to the guy at the entrance a ping pong ball, because it's a club of, for ping pong. It will, be, it, it will really suck if you have like a ping pong ball in, in, another, in another place, like just to grab and use. It would be much better to, if you use, uh, for example, a chicken egg that he can grab in a place and show the chicken egg to the to the guy there, and it enters like a, like if there was a, a, a ping pong bar or something like that, because the, that way the player will feel like, oh, I was smart. I just used this thing that is is not exactly that, but could be like like used for that. Other way to make uh, puzzles complex, uh, complex in this in this kind of game is uh, like chaining puzzles. Like you have to open the door, but to open the door you will need a key. But the key is in a pig. But the pig is in a plane. But the plane is in a train. Something like that. I, I mean, you have to like if you did do this, it, uh, that kind of chain of events, you will add a lot of complexity and it will be fun. I mean, uh, I'll. Other other way to do that is uh, make like multiple puzzles at the same time. The guy is looking for the pig, but at the same time he can also look for for a dragon that is in a cave, 
and at the same time for the key of for to enter his home and a beer to give to his mother i don't know something like that you you have like multiple threads crazy threads going on and he's like well i i should do that but also he can do that other thing and and stuff like that well as I, this is exactly what i was saying so i will skip this uh, again, this started the player with many objectives, as I was telling you just right now. Ah, and give the player like a lot of place to explore because that's something that is really important in these games. Just place to, to walk through to see, oh, what's this cascade? Oh, what's this mushroom? Oh, what is this door that leads to a, another dimension? I mean, he have to be like wandering with and exploring everything, so it gives something interesting uh, for them to to watch. Uh, keep a, a consistent logic uh, with this with this kind of of game. If the player is too weak to carry, a, I don't know, a, a stone that is that big, in the next scene, don't make it that he can like grab a piano and walk in in the pocket because it will piss off the player. Uh, it, and think carefully about each puzzle solution. It has to, to have a logic behind it. Uh, avoid annoying characters. Uh, make the, pl the, the, main pl the main character have to need to have a, like a cool voice, a calm voice, because the player will be stressed already because he have like that pig that he need to rescue and that plane that is about to crash and a lot of things that he have to solve. And if the player that he's always hearing, it's an annoying one, has like a high pitched voice or something like that, it will be really terribly annoying. Make him charismatic, make him funny, make him each phrase that he has to say he had to say something interesting because you will be hear, hearing that guy like a lot of time. Avoid repeating commentaries like the typical and find a, cre a creative way to say no because you are going to say no a lot. Like, can I do? Can I take that bomb and explode everything? No, because X. Because the other way the game will be like super easy. So you have to find creative way to say the word no that is kind of hard. You have to give kind of an explanation instead of say no, I cannot do that. It, it, it's it's hard to do that, but you have to. Uh, and last, don't be afraid. It's hard, not impossible. You will learn will learn a lot, and adventure games are really, really, really fun to make. The only problem is that there is a lot of data, data entry, data entry, and data entry because everything in that in this kind of a game is like data entry. Any question? Uh, when you uh, so your character has a lot of uh, phrases, right? Yes, uh, and a lot. he talk a lot. Do you do uh, lip sync animation, or you just do like pop ups and uh, what well, he's talking? Lip sync, lip -sync. You like yeah. you know, animate. No, lip we try to avoid lip syncing mm -hmm. because we will get like super mad. In fact, that the 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 character that is uh, let's see this guy here, mm -hmm. the smiley one. He, he, the idea is he don't even have a mouth. He have like painted that smile there, but he don't move lips. Other guys like, for example, for example, this one, Todd. But they like, a, like, they have like a three or four animation of the mouth, like uh, ooh, ooh, and they uh, appear like uh, randomly when they start to play the soundtrack of the of the game. Yes. Hi, thank you for the presentation, very yeah. nice. Uh, I have a question, so how much time do you spend for the prototyping? So how, how, and what is your workflow, by the way? Uh, uh, what is my work? I workflow. My so workflow? Yeah, how do you manage your project? How do you yeah, well, do everything? Uh, first of all, uh, we write, we, we make like the writing of the game. Like, uh, then we make like the list of items that will be there. Uh, there's the scenarios that will be the, the, that we have to to drown the quantity of character that we have to to animate uh, the animation that they they need to make, and then we just uh, will uh, we are making like a, a, a mock up of the scenario. Will the artist is drawing everything, 
And with the artist is driving everything, we are like checking constantly what's, what the artist is, is like doing. He first make like a sketch uh, without coloring, without nothing, and we say, well, well let's, do it. let's do this, or no, 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 change this, then change that, and, or, or add this, and when it's like ready, the, the, we, we just like drop it in the mock-up, and voila, it works. <laughs> Did this uh, answer your, your question? Yeah, yeah cool. Okay, one more question. The super beard guy. I Thank totally you, your beard that. looks nice as well, man. So, first of all, uh, Monkey Island 3, probably best in the series, but I still think Neverhood is the best adventure game. Uh, however, yeah. is there any tool you use to uh, keep track of like all your narrative, all your items, all like different choices you can make? It is, sorry. Is there any tool you use or no. any way to no. keep... No, nothing? We did, no, we just use uh, like Word. And we we can like uh, make like a system to 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 use reference like an, an alphabetic and numerical system that use in the in the dialogues, and we use the same labels for the sound for the sound yeah for the sound uh, tracks yeah, so it's much easier for us to to end to input this in, in the game. But we use like kind of A three C kind of that kind of a system to make the the tree and it totally worked it, 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 it's it was pretty easy we have to of course be all together and say well what's the best way to do this well let's do this this way the a represent this the b represent this the three and once you get used it's like pretty fast thanks that yeah cool any more questions one more? Yeah. oh one more you mentioned localization. Yes. Uh, what are the main problems you face during the localization? Well, the main problem is that we don't think about it the first time. <laughs> and, and that kind of was pretty stupid. I mean, we, we made the game uh, on, on English and we think like, oh, cool, we are in English. Everyone understands it. But, but no, I mean, with all publishers that we talk, they, they say, oh, good, cool game, but uh, do you think about localization? And we, at the first, we don't think about it. Uh, so now we have to make uh, a lot of, again, data entry. In fact, we have to change a lot of variables related with each item. If we, if we think this uh, in the first time, it will be made, made like, much more easy because the variable is, here, is there. We have like one language, but we know that we can add a lot, a multiple ones. Right now, we have to, to recode uh, the prototype and once that is done, like the rest of the of the the localization thing is like a road down. It's much more easy. But right now we are kind of screwed with that thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Oh no, thank you. Uh, you are a cool audience. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any more questions, just catch the speaker.